All right, g'day guys, Andrew Dwight, pretty excited actually. We've uh, just uh, about to release Pluspect 2016. I thought I'd give you a quick sneak peek and what it actually does. We've done a lot of things. We've uh, created uh, tools for trusses, um, voids, so much. Look, I mean, it's, it's, it's unbelievable how much work we've actually done in the last couple of months just to make sure that Pluspect 16 was perfect for you. So you know what, this is just something pretty simple that I just quickly whacked together there, there's not a great deal to it. But what I'm going to do is show you how to add trusses, so let's have a look at this one over here. Oops. There we go. And you can see some pretty complicated trusses there and it looks like it would take a long time to do. Uh, and we've also got some MEP as well, which basically means uh, mechanical, electrical and plumbing and we can add pipes and a whole heap of new cool things uh, that make it easier for us to understand what it is uh, we're building from and also estimating with and designing. Okay so you know I think one of the major things I come across in the industry is clashes you know what I mean. Over here we've got an air conditioning pipe and you can see if that steel beam was full size it would actually clash with this particular air conditioning duct. So if I went and put some trusses in there we can have a look at how it might uh, work with say I put some trusses there it might clash with the truss we might have to move the air conditioning duct or the the tube for the air conditioning duct left or right and it could happen very easily on site and and I've seen it happen before so let's have a bit of a look here okay so what I've done I've just basically I've clicked on the trusses and it's gonna go now I can see we're right am I getting any clashes there we'll turn it off clear view you know what it's not too bad and being that air conditioning ducts are actually uh, not solid we will probably bend it around there and I'd let that one fly so I just maybe just move it over a little bit so it looks a little bit better and I can do that I've also you'll notice that a girder truss which is holding more weight due to the fact that all these ones are on it. It's gone red as well which may basically allows us to go okay we will upgrade that lintel size there because I think it's the optimum space for the window but in some cases you might go whether the windows to the left or the right whatever it just helps you a little bit with design. So let's go back and have a bit of a look at uh, this model here that I've drawn and there's nothing special about this model guys it's definitely no uh, uh, award-winning piece um, but let's have a look at, at putting some trusses in here and, and how this works okay so what I'm going to do I'll just go to the roof tool and you'll notice this new little icon down here it's called the truss tool okay now there's a lot of options in here so you've got pitch and you can change uh, the type of trusses and you can change a whole heap of different things here and they're all parametric uh, so you can go and do it over and over again until you get it right alright now I don't like to actually draw on top of walls existing because you know it's easy to make a mistake between getting between insulation and frame and, and uh, I'm sure most of us know that the frame is the load bearing part in this particular construction method if it was double brick it would be the same thing the internal skin is load bearing so it's going to go and create a whole heap of scenes here okay and what these scenes basically do for us is they allow us to look at structure so I'll click here and now I can see I've got structure okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ascertain which is the largest span first. I could go about it in several different ways. I could even start with the lower span first. Uh, and I might as well give that a crack, eh? Let's have a look. So this roof here, I, because I've been building for a long while, I understand that roofs have got to go into other roofs. So if I was going to start with this first, and you'll see why it doesn't work out as logical, but it still works. Uh, I'm going to need valley trusses to go back into that other roof over there. So I'm just going to go submit here and I'm going to zoom into my roof here and I'm going to start from this side so I know where to end although I could have gone the other way and push shift and then go from here to here. Okay. And essentially uh, we're doing a lot of work here in the background so it takes a second or two but it saves you a lot of work. Okay and now if I went I could still go and draw my trusses here now but it's going to put valley trusses in so I'm just going to go back to here and say you know what want to change this. If you do do it by mistake, it is parametric and you can turn it off. Let's say, okay, I don't want this one here. Go submit. And I'm going to zoom into where my roof and my wall is. And over to here. And I'm going to just go, say, to here. And I'm going to put those trusses in there. Now, I didn't click an end truss, which means it didn't put a truss on the end of where I was drawing from. 
I'm going to go over to here and to here and I'm going to go all the way to the end there and now what it's done is put trusses in for me very very quickly and it's also shown me where the load bearing points were you know what you still need a structural engineer or a truss company to design these for you but at the end of the day I now have trusses that will actually work and they'll actually blend in they've even got little slip blocks in there and and the size and we can change the size of the timbers on the trusses if you're going to go say a hardwood truss you can even create your own timbers and now I have a truss roof very very quickly very very efficiently now if I did a takeoff from these here if I went up to here you know what I might have to put a quick job address in no it's already got a job address in and I can now go and have a look at my trusses so it tells me I need 12 creeper trusses uh, six main trusses it tells me the pitch uh, it tells me everything that is required to actually create these trusses All right, very very quickly okay uh, I've also got ancillaries which is basically some slip blocks so I'll just explain that to you so if I went back over to here you'll notice that I needed some extra timber in there we call them slip blocks so that the saddle truss this one's called doesn't fall down the roof okay so that's pretty cool uh, I can still go back and look at it in plan and I can go and put a roof on top of it so let's go to all here and have a look so I don't, you can see that I don't have a roof on top of it if I right click my wall and this has been in Plusspect for a while now I'm going to select all my connected walls or I can just generate a roof face from walls so I'm going to go roof from walls and I know that the last one I created was 22 degrees and the overhang was 600 I can now go submit and now I have a roof instantly with trusses inside of it so if I go to transparent view you can now see that everything goes together I can also ascertain where the load bearing parts are uh, so if I go back to my structure you can see well we've got more weight here but there's also you can see well hold on these overhangs here shouldn't be there so let's just quickly get rid of those uh, because we don't want to clash trusses here uh, and I probably don't really need this one here either All right and now we won't have timber sitting through our roof space Let's just see that one in there, see that one in there and when I do this we can see alright, oh, there's simple things that we might not pick up and might not be able to do, so now we have girder trusses, saddle trusses and everything and these are parametric, so I'll go back to all and say you know what, we've decided that we want to have a a gable here, so I'm going to go back and change my roof this is something we've had for a while guys and I'm going to say the pitch is 90 degrees on the overhang and it's 600 millimeters long so okay but it didn't change the trusses that's cool because these trusses are parametric okay so simply I go to the truss I can either go back up to here or I can right click which just makes it a little bit easier and say so these trusses here need to be gable submit you can see what's happening behind the scenes there it's allowing me to really really quickly change my design around obviously I can go back to the wall and change that to gable as well but it's just a demonstration so you can see how much power we're getting one of the real benefits of this is when we're running our section cuts we can very very quickly grab a section of what it is that we wanted to do so I might say well you know what I want to run a section and because I clicked that tab earlier on I'm going to have some pre-made sections there for me and I might just need to adjust them so that I can have a bit of a look so I'll go to section A okay, and I'll move it so that the section sits inside the roof a little bit further and the amount of work involved in doing this stuff is incredible uh, you know it's just saved so much time so let's have a bit of a look at the section A now okay Right, we have a lot of information in there. I can go and turn my frame on if I wanted to. I'm using uh, SketchUp 16 uh, Pro here. It can be done still in Make, but I'm just going to go and turn my frames on. And I'm going to go down to here and put my timber frames in, just so you can see how much detail is actually getting put in here. So my bottom plates and my top plates are all in there. If I went through and said, I'm going to go back to all and put another window in here, I might say, I'll have a look where that section cut is and I'll put a window where my section cut is okay because everything's happening very very quickly and very very efficiently and I'll go here it doesn't really matter what type of window I choose 
I'll go through and put my heads and everything in as well, which means to, to detail a section cut is now taking no time at all. You know, it's got some cool little measurements there, it's telling us how far from the end of the wall it is uh, before the window starts and so on. Let's go back to my section, which is section A, and we'll have a bit of a look now at how much detail we've got in there. Okay, if I turn my frame back on, uh, frame, sorry, wrong one. I now you can see my lintels, uh, my heads over top of my windows, and have a lot of information there ready to go and put into the layout for drafting in 2D. Very quick, very, very efficient, and it makes our work as designers and as builders very simple to do. Doing a takeoff from everything is possible. I think everyone's seen by now that we can associate price with things, but if not, uh, so everything that's inside of that roof now I can go through and I can set a price. You can see I've already got prices in there that I've saved. Uh, my face here might require another price that's already in there. I can change the prices of everything. Let's have a look if I can find one that doesn't have a price inside of it. Okay. Uh, uh, so what have we got here? We've got uh, 130 by 36 structural. Look, I'm going to take a guess, guys. I'm going to say that that's probably around about three dollars and fifty cents. And to install that, we might charge two bucks a meter or something like that. All right, go down and go save and update prices. Saved them for next time. We never have to do it again. And it's very, very powerful. So let's do a takeoff on a big model like this. Well, it's actually a small model, but it doesn't matter. That could be ten times bigger, and I can still take it off in this amount of time so I've clicked it now I've got one two three four five seconds and it's gone through and it's chosen all the termite barrier all the flooring all the joists all the frame roof trusses which we drew in there before girders truncated gut trusses and it's given us a pitch on all of them we've got our insulation uh, and I think in my timber frame I had 130 by 36 I wrote in there or something like that there we go 130 by 36 there we go there's the prices that I put in there so it's very very quick very very efficient and I'm getting a price guys it won't be long before you actually can start to put this into your accounting software which makes a huge difference if you're an architect and you're doing it for your builder you've just saved him probably 30 40 hours having his accounting packages done like this and uh, and if you're a builder and your architect's not using Pluspec, the best thing you can do is give them a call and say, man, you really need to get onto this because we uh, are going to change the way this industry works for the better. I think it was too much waste, too much inefficiency, and uh, and we, we want a, an industry that actually sails along nicely. All right, guys, look, if you, if you need any more information, by all means, give us, give us a call, um, or you can go to our website. We've got a forum, and we've got a blog as well. Just pause this if you need to get it. And uh, hopefully we see you over at Prospect soon. Cheers, guys.